Me? Sir, it's uh, the question number is 18 and 16. Okay. There could be many 16s and uh, many 18s. Yes. Uh, sir, one of them is from the... Uh, what is it called? The, mm -hmm. the power, power and the pressure subtopic. Okay. Were they in practice once or like within those? No, sir. They were um, above this. Okay. Yes, sir. This one okay. and this one. This one and this one. Yes. Okay. I'll do that. So, uh... And so there's a, this airplane question as well. That's been playing before this. Okay, I'll do it. Don't worry, I'll do it. Okay. So, uh, speaking of... Oh, no. Okay. Guys, just a second, okay. I I'm trying to Oh my goodness. You guys can hear me clearly? First you tell me that? Okay. Fine. So for this question, okay. For this question, you need to remember that uh, it says this is the final position and that was the initial position. And the difference between this and this is like five centimeters, right? Then it says that, um, yeah. then it says, uh, and the diameter is this, so this diameter is like 20.0 centimeter. And now it says, uh, the gas is heated, causes piston to move, the pressure remains constant of how much work is done. Uh, how much work done the ga uh, by the gas, okay, so we're going to do First of all, we got to find the volume. So volume is area times length. Area can be found out by pi by four d square and length will be this length, the change in length we're finding. Is it clear, Sultanat? Okay. So then yes, what you want to do is pi by four Diameter is 20 times 10 raised to minus 2. Because I want it to, I want to get this in joules. Okay. Times the length will be 5 into 10 raised to minus 2. So I'm going to use my calculator now. Pi by 4 times um, 20 times 10 raised to our minus 2 and whole square and then you got to multiply this oh no wait up uh, 5 into 10 is to power minus 2 so that's going to be 0 0.00157 uh, meter square meter cube then what you're going to do is you're going to use work done is equal to pressure time change in volume pressure is 102 pascals so 102 times 0 0.00157 so I'm going to multiply this with 102. Pressure is very less. So I'm getting 0 0.160, 0, which is this answer. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Hmm. Then the next. So the next thing you should be doing, you asked me to do this one, right? Yes. Okay. So it says, what is the expression? Efficiency. Hmm. So energy input 
is Q that's given here and says that useful work is when it expands uh, this volume to this so change in volume is going to be Vf minus V0 and work useful work will be then pressure into change in volume so pressure times Vf minus V0 so useful work over um, input energy is going to be the answer so let's see mm -hmm. you get it yes sir okay pretty good So there is this big question. Okay. Airplane question. We gotta find it's that. From the, it's from the power subtopic. Power. Okay. Question number 18. This one? Yes, sir. Okay. So it says an aircraft travels uh, constant velocity 90. In the horizontal flight, the diagram shows. Mm -hmm. What is the power produced by thrust? <clears throat> Hello. So the power produced by thrust. Volumes, huh? Okay, so what you want to do is you should understand at constant velocity the forward force should also be 2400. Do you understand? As backward force. Yes, sir. Because forces will be balanced if it's like constant velocity. Then force, um, like power is given by force time velocity so force would be 2400 and velocity is 90 so i don't know what there is the answer then uh, where is the calculator 2400 times 90 216000 where is that this one uh oh yeah somewhere i lost it sorry no, where it went. Yeah. It's B then. Do you understand? Easy. Yes, sir. That's it? Okay. That's it, that's it. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to uh, the next. Today, basically, we are gonna do deformation. And that would be the end of all the mechanical no, not all. Yeah, forces. Forces will end here. Anyway. So, uh, when looking at deformation, you need to understand that extension is given by the final length minus initial length. Yes. Yes. I have. Check the drive link. Okay. Refresh the drive link. So the extension is the change in length that occurs because of this force and uh, the force can be of two types okay there could be a tension force tension force is basically force that pulls outwards so what it means is that like you would apply force here you would apply force here so this object will be in tension and compression Compressive force is the force that squeeze, squeezes inwards, which means that the force will be like this and it will like, like be squeezed or the dimension is going to be smaller. Okay. So generally, 
to know when it is tension force and when it is uh, compression force you can remember that extension will be a positive value because the final length is always larger and in compression the extension is like a negative value because the final length is smaller so when you do final minus initial you will get a negative value automatically anyway so going towards hooke's law hooke's law basically tells you that force <coughs> sorry force is directly proportional to extension unless limit of proportionality has not reached okay so force is directly proportional to extension when you remove this sign you get k this k is represented by the spring constant and spring constant k is defined as force per unit length the si units for spring constants a spring constant are newton meter got to remember that and obviously for each spring it will have a specific value now the reason this is important because it shows stiffness okay all right stiffness of spring which means a stiffer would a stiffer spring would take larger force to show extension okay uh compared to a softer spring which will take smaller force to show the same amount of uh extension so you got to remember that okay then so then you have like uh, three things i would just want to remind you in case you have directly proportional directly proportional means that the math equation is y equals to mx and a directly pro proportional graph is always starting from zero and it will be a straight line all right so it will uh, start from origin and it will be a straight line if in physics they say something is just proportional it means that it could be like starting from non zero value like y intercept and would be a straight line so the math equation for this is like y equals to mx plus c so i believe you guys have already done this and then this is like a straight line only and inversely proportional is like this a curve downwards the math equation for this is y equals to 1 upon x and it basically is a downward curve so any time you hear these words you should always remember about the type of graph they're going to show you they're going to help you big time now you can write this down please and then we're going to go forward Yeah. I have to reverse the proportional graph. I don't know. Probably you should ask a math teacher. <laughs> It's just that if you put na equal points of uh, like x, you won't get like a straight line at all. Okay. Like if you do one upon two, one upon one is one, right? Uh, Khadija. and 1 upon 2 is 0.5 so that's half but when you put 1 upon 3 that's not exactly like more half it's not 0.25 it's i think something less right do you understand yeah, yeah. that's one okay then force extension graph so because it says that it's a uh, hooke's law says that force 
and um, uh, the extension are directly proportional which means that the in this the graph will be a straight line and it will be continue to be a straight line until limit proportional when it starts to bend now the bending you might see starts from a point here and it always bends like towards x in favor of x i would say not towards x but favor of x the reason is then now it will show more extension for a smaller force okay so this point is called p limit of uh, proportionality and obviously it is a point beyond which hooke's law is not obeyed all right so if you extend it too much obviously it's going to be like that sometimes they're going to give you like flipped axis just to confuse you but you just need to draw it where the x is so you bend with the favor of x like in in the direction just favor x there okay like that now most of the mistakes that people do is that instead of like bending they bend it like this please don't do that neither it's like this neither it is straight it will be like slightly bent is it clear everyone do not make a u turn there please okay so from the graph itself if you find the gradient of the graph like this and like this so you can find f over x you don't even need to do that because you can always take one point as 0 0 whatever whenever you want to because the graph will always start from 0 but the gradient of this graph will give you k because spring constant is f upon x all right this graph only so you will remember that anyway now so then they might also give you a different graph which doesn't which which basically is between length and force if that graph comes it will start from a certain value of length and you guys need to understand that this this length where the force was zero this means that this length is the original length okay they uh, they want you to basically know that this is the original length and after that whatever happens here after that that's just uh, extension okay my hands are now working in this direction um, so like that. Is yes. the second graph above how, how is the gradient model working again second graph yeah this one. one yeah in this one what is the gradient it will be 1 upon k because if you take gradient it will be x upon f which will be 1 upon k like that okay. so it will Go always ahead. be f over x in any case okay hmm. Hmm. Now, we're going to go forward. I hope you guys run this. It's pretty easy. So in this question, it says the mass is in equilibrium. By reference to forces acting on the mass, what is meant by equilibrium? Because the weight is down, the tension in the spring will be up. So that would mean that the weight and tension are equal and opposite so net force you can also write resultant is zero that is why it is an equilibrium yes sir okay then so they've shown a wave and they say the mass is at maximum speed so obviously uh, you just need to remember that whenever whatever potential energy is when it changes to kinetic that's when you lose some distance right 
so in a spring it's elastic potential so it will be maximum energy will be on these points and uh, like maximum kinetic energy will be here and on the top points you will have maximum top or the bottom sorry maximum elastic potential energy so which is what is the maximum speed obviously the maximum speed would be 0.2 the reason is that uh, it's uh, and the kinetic energy here is maximum and the elastic potential is stored when it is the maximum uh, it is going to be at either 4 so you can say 0 seconds that would be maximum you can also say 0 0.4 if you want to okay because it's stretched how is 0 .2 the maximum speed? why 0 0.2 is the maximum speed yes and why 0 0.6 is not because why 0 0.6 is not? 0 0.6 is also maximum speed in a different direction though. It's the same. Both points are the same. Is that clear? Generally, what we do is we take the initial points. Like I like to take the initial points because in my head, I also see A2. And in A2, we learn that obviously the um, oscillations will dampen out, which means lose energy. And right now it's not in this one, but it does. So usually the first two points are the maximum energy ones. Is it clear? So that's, that's how I do, do it. Uh, and says you want when the mass is in equilibrium, obviously when you will have no potential energy, so it will not want to restore it, which means that here the constant speed will be here and here. So it will be the same. So at maximum kinetic energy, it will also be in equilibrium because uh, there won't be any elastic potential energy left. Is it clear? Please repeat this. Yes. So what I'm saying is, if you look at this, let me show, okay, this. So if you understand that this is the spring and then the spring is like completely down, right? So there could be three positions, like it could be this way or it could be like this. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So it has like four centimeter, it can go four centimeter down and it can go like four centimeter up, right? In both these things, there will be a resultant force because the force is trying to restore it back to its equilibrium point, which is this. This is the equilibrium. Do you understand? Yes. So that would mean that this point, like this point right here, Dipesh, how are you? Mm, yes, I'm fine. Dipesh, your class is in like one hour. This is AS, not A2. Okay. Okay, so thank you. In one hour, come back again. All right. So this is the equilibrium. So it means equilibrium means here the resultant force is zero. Do you understand, Sultanat? And where would the equilibrium yes. be? Equilibrium be when it has no displacement, which is this point, or this point, or this point. Do you understand? Like that. Yes. So that's why I put it too. Okay. Now, in the next part, it shows you a length versus mass graph. And uh, it says state explain whether the spring obeys Hooke's law. It does because the line is just straight, right? So we're going to say it does obey as the extension and force are directly proportional. Now it says show that the force constant is uh, 26. Now because this is a length graph, this is not that, so you, you're not supposed to take it like, um, you're not supposed to take it uh, directly from the length. You have to find the extension. So we're going to say from this to this, 
it basically causes an extension of 15 into 10 raised to minus 2 meters and like if you go down and this is caused by a force which is 0 0.40 mg so this is like kg sorry so we got mass as 0 0.40 kilograms and the extension we have is 115 into 10 raised to minus 2 meters yeah so we're going to change this into weight so weight will be mass times 9.81 and uh, spring constant is going to be this force divided by 15 times 10 raised to minus 2 you guys understand this yes okay so then i believe you guys now understand what type of um, okay so i believe that this is the amount of force that is, whatever the answer is that would be 26 but we can still try you know that sound be lazy this is just the start of the class times 9.81 divided by 15 times 10 raised to power minus 2 okay always put brackets when you're doing this the reason is it can go terribly wrong so this is 26.2 newton meter so why are you changing mass into weight again because the force uh, the extend uh, the spring constant is force times ex over extension so not mass over okay. extension right yeah force is like a fine then it says the mass of 0 0.4 kg is attached to the spring calculate the energy stored okay this is the question i'm going to give you as homework and later on when we do energy you can come back and do it on your own anyway now um we also need to basically learn about certain experiments that are going to come in your exam as well okay so so the experiments are like for example you need to put a fixed meter rule and a spring you will keep on adding different masses and when you add a new mass like they have added say the original spring was original length was this one let's call this l naught and every time you have an increment of mass you get a new value of you know uh, length and you can plot a graph and then obviously use that to find spring constant so that's pretty simple so first of all it says explain how the apparatus may be used to determine the load on the spring at the elastic limit so we can say that till like elastic limit is the time like the limit till beyond which it will not come back to original shape so we say that uh, till the graph stays straight okay line we keep on incrementing masses till the line bends okay so we're gonna do this uh, to know where exactly the limit of proportion uh, limit or elastic limit is the same extent says with this spring obeys hook's law yes because number one it is a straight line number two obviously you have to write it starts from origin starts from zero um, extension or you can simply say that force and extension are directly proportional so both of the things you can uh, start from origin you can write or force is this so this would be like that anyway then says use the determine the spring constant this i'm going to give you as homework because the same thing i've done like previously this is a length graph as well so let me know if you have a question okay Ahmed 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 okay Never mind. So then we're going to look at the combination of springs. This is pretty simple. Sometimes the 
examiner might ask you to do derivations, so you got to learn how to derivate them. So suppose we have two springs, uh, one has spring constant k1, other has k2. So what you guys need to remember is that in series, force in each spring remains same. Okay, so it means that extension may be different depending on the spring constant. So whatever the total extension is, that's going to be x1 plus x2, the ex extension in this one, x1, extension in this one, x2. So because force is equal to kx, so and x is equal to like force over k, so I can write force over k total total spring constant will be equal to force over k1 plus force over k2 because force is same so we can cancel it out, cancel it out and the rest of things you get like 1 upon k total equals to 1 upon k1 plus 1 upon k2 plus so on Don't, it doesn't really matter how many k's are there in parallel system suppose this is k1 this is k2 you guys need to remember that extension remains same if pulled together. So if they're pulled together, extension remains same, but the force is different in each. So then what you're going to do is force total force f will be equal to f1 plus f2 so suppose this one is taking up f1 this is taking up f2 force so then uh, you're gonna get like f is equal to kx you can put f uh, sorry k total times x equals to k1x plus k2x so x and x will cancel out like this 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 and ultimately you're gonna be left with k total equals to k1 plus k2 plus no matter how many they are okay video the check bro youtube okay so then we're gonna see yeah all right done Fine. So when comparing like uh, a, a series system, series system has like the same force. So we need to understand that for the same force, a stiffer spring would like cause less extension and a, uh, you know, a, a softer spring will have more extension like you can see. And with this one, like in a parallel system because extension is kept same so a softer spring will take less force but the stiffer spring will take more force so you guys need to understand that so this one has a greater gradient so this is a stiffer one and this is a softer one so from the graph you can also tell the higher the gradient obviously the greater the stiffness that there is going to be Okay, any questions please let me know. Okay, so then we are gonna go towards, yeah, you can write it down, let me check. People, my people, okay. Uh, Amna and Aman, you guys understand everything? Khatija squares, Juvaria, Laiba? Yes. Maham? Uh, Sultanat Ryan Ways Bajia. Okay. And yeah. And so hail Umar, Yaya, Ali. You guys understand that? Ahmed Aziz is not here, right? Yes. Today. Okay, that's not good. Anyway. Oh. I just remembered him and he came in. Wow. Okay. Now 
so for this question it says state what is elastic deformation uh, well elastic deformation means that the object will return to its original shape when unloaded unloaded means that when we're going to remove load and then it says relationship between KLE now they've just changed the name of extension to E don't worry about that and L to load so we have F equals to KX so we can write it as L equals to KE that's the same thing okay now in this question it says some identical springs with each spring constant K so all of them have the same spring constant and it says find the total extension and spring constant arrangement. So I'll do this one first because logically it should be first and then we'll find the total extension. So in this one, I know that in series, the k's are like one upon k total equals to one upon k plus one upon k. So the k total is going to be k over two, right? So I'm gonna write k upon two. And okay, I'll just do it, do one more step so you guys understand what I've just done. So you can write it as 2 over k and then when you take the reciprocal it's going to be two, k over 2. And then it says total extension. So total load is L. So we can use L k by 2 times E. And we need to find uh, E. So it's going to be 2L over k. So like that. Is that clear everyone? Could you please repeat it? Yes. So do you understand how I found the total extension? So that? No, sir. Okay. So in series, the formula is like, you know, one upon K total equals to one upon K one plus one upon K two like that, right? So, then, so I want to find the total spring constant in this because they're in series. I will do one upon K plus one upon K. You understand up till now? Yes, sir. So because the base is same, so I can take that common one plus one is two. And then you take reciprocal to find K total, which will be K over two. You get it? Yes, sir. Now we have the formula L equals to K. Now the load is L, the K is K over two, and the extension is E. We want to find the total extension, right? So it is going to be two L over K like that. You get it? Now? Yes. Hmm. In the next one, which is a parallel one, you have K, you have K. Now, in parallel, we should understand that the total spring constant will be just addition of it because it is K1 plus K2 plus K3. So we have 2K. Now, load equals to spring constant times E. The load in this is L. 2k times e so e will be l over 2k this is 2k and this is l over 2k is it clear please check let me know damn it okay. hmm. all right pretty good pretty good and then we're going to move to the next one and next one is this one now in case there's like a combination of spring and you're worried that you cannot do this but don't worry so first of all you will always find you will always solve the inner one so this is the first one and then use the inner one and then the next one as the total one right so you have to find first and then you have to do the second one like in the same way so first one is a parallel one. So we already know all of them is K and K. We already know that this is like 2K because we have done it previously. We don't have to do it again. So this will be 2K. And now I have to find the K total. So they are in series. So one upon K total will be equal to one upon 2K plus one upon K. Please have a look at it and let me know if I've done it correctly or not. And you understand or not? Okay, so I'm solving. Okay, I'm doing it again. I'm solving this again. Okay, so I'm gonna solve the inner loop first, like the inner combination first. 
so that's a, a parallel one so in parallel it is k plus k which is going to be 2k you agree so if this is all 2k and this is k now i could solve this right so if i solve this then in series it is 1 upon k total equals to 1 upon k1 plus 1 upon k2 so i will do k total equals to 1 upon 2k 2k for the for this combination and plus 1 upon k do you understand then i'm going to take a reciprocal so 2k will be reciprocal and this is going to be 1 this is going to be 2 1 upon k total so when you take k total it's going to be 2k over 3 so that's what i should be getting all right let me know if you have a confusion still then the next thing is very easy load is equal to ke the load here is also l i'm going to write load and k is 2k by 3 times e we got to find the total e so it's going to be 3l over 2k and that should be our answer and that's for five marks so please don't lose this if this comes in your exam okay please have a look at it just absorb for like 30 seconds I'll be back. I just need water. Next, so we're gonna basically talk about um, this one. Now this, I just want to give you this as homework because this is very simple. And then I also want to give you this, like this whole question is a homework with easy and also these homeworks. Now I've done most of it, so you guys will be able to do the rest. I believe if you don't, please do ask me in the next class. Also this one. So if you practice a bit, you will be able to do them, no worries. Anyway, so now we're going to look at elastic limit. Elastic limit is a point beyond which a material does not return to its original shape after unloading. And that's when we say it is permanently deformed permanently deformed or plastic deformation has happened so basically uh, plastic deformation or permanently deformed is the same thing so a lot of people get confused about uh, limit of proportionality and elastic limit i just want to you know clear that out that actually when you turn this so the first point is always the limit of proportionality let me write it here and limit of proportionality is just uh, um, the point beyond which Hooke's law is not followed and just after this you have elastic limit just after this and you know the definition from the top okay so elastic limit is needed because before elastic limit we know that it is behaving as an elastic object and it will help us determine the energy stored so basically so this is the elastic limit so area under the graph area under the graph basically gives us 
elastic potential energy and that's only till elastic limit so you guys need to remember that okay so it is half times force times x so that's one formula and the other formula can be like because f is equal to b half into k x square because k x times x will be x square so this formula is widely used so do not worry these both formulas work now for the change of energy you just need to remember that you have to find like if that's what they say to find the change in energy between x and x2 so what you want to do is if it has a value k so you will always find the change in energy the correct way of doing this is when you do half k x2 squared minus half k x1 squared now by doing this basically what you're achieving is you're right you're doing e2 minus e1 so you're finding energy for the first part and the second part and then subtracting them so the change in energy then can be written as half k is common so x2 square minus x1 square so you can remember this it's all right what pe most people do is and that's the wrong way and you'll always get a wrong answer because what they do is they write change in energy like half k and then basically take x2 minus x1 whole square so they subtract this and when they subtract this you get you get a different function so if you look at the two functions this function is a square minus b square which is a completely different function and this function is like a minus b whole square so that's wrong please do not follow that anyway please write it down and let me know if you have a question Okay. Cool. <sighs> All right then. I hope this is clear and then we're going to go to the questions. So for example in this question it says when there is no force applied to the spring it has a length of 1 and when force is applied uh when force what is the increase in the strain energy stored when the spring when its length is increased from 2 cm to 3 cm oh okay now if you look at this question it says initial length of the spring was like 1 cm and then when you applied the force the length increased from 2 to 3 it means that basically we don't know what the force was uh, frankly but we do know that um this like it had an extension of uh extension at this point x1 as 1 cm and at this one extension would be 2 cm because the original length was 1 right so if you don't understand this let me just explain it this way so extension is given by like final length minus initial length so to find the final length uh to find the extension we got to do final length which is 2 minus the initial length was 0 or 1 so one extension in the start and then in the second one the extension is going to be 3 minus 1 2 so like that i've done this okay so from this we can find k k will be force over extension which is 8 divided by we want it in joules right so we'll just divide 4.0 times 10 to the minus 2 and that's going to give us in newton per meter so 8 divided by 4 into 10 to the power minus 2 so that's going to be like 200 newton meter then what you going to do is just use change in energy equals to half into 200 into the other the extension was 2 squared minus 1 squared oh we have to use 0.02 squared minus 0.01 squared because i need to change it into 
um, centimeters uh, meters okay so when you do that it's going to be 0 0.2 times 200 times 0 0.02 whole square minus 0 0.01 whole square now please don't take two or three that would be a wrong answer so that's 0 0.012 i don't know what that answer is. do we have that answer no we don't have that answer that's not fair That is not fair. Sorry, Amna. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my bad. Sorry. 0 0.03. I was very surprised at why there's no answer like that. So it should be like this. Now, if you take like, uh, if you take two or three, that would give you a completely different answer. And if you take like, you do, uh, 2 minus 1 that would give you a different answer so please don't do that always use this formula and that's basically half k x2 square minus x1 square or you can simply do and you can find energy in the first one energy in the second one subtract so this question is the same I just wanted to give you as homework for practice sure, I didn't really get this question you didn't get it okay Khatija that's not fair let's do this so Khadija, it says that the spring initially, when there was no load, was one centimeter, right? Then when you added some load, it became two centimeter. So what is the extension? Extension one will be one, right? Then when you added more load, it became three centimeters. So what is the extension then? Two because three minus you got the extension. Now I found K from the graph because I don't know what the force was at that point. Do you understand? Like I can look at from the graph, that's fine. But K will be eight yeah. divided by four into ten is to minus two. So I got it as two hundred. Right? Then I did change in energy. Change in energy is energy two minus energy one. What is energy two? Half K X. 2 whole square minus half k x 1 whole square right so half into 200 and then i wrote 0 0.02 whole square and then minus half into 200 and i wrote 0 0.01 square and i got 0 0.030 do you understand now okay yeah, got it. okay i hope that's simple enough and then the next questions are the same. Uh, I just want you guys to do it. And in case you don't understand that. Oh, I'll do this question though. So it says a spring of a, an extended length is 40 millimeters and suspended from a fixed point. So we got a spring that's basically 40 millimeter. And it says a load of 16 Newton is then applied. Okay. And then it says this causes the spring to so that extend so that the final length is five times the original length oh so the final length will be 5 into 40 what is that 200 and then it says obeys Hooke's law what is the energy stored now that's pretty easy because that's pretty easy because that that does not even require anything so we uh, extension will be like 200 minus 40 that's going to be i think 160 then energy will be half into force times extension okay so force is going to be 16 and extension is going to be 160 times 10 is to minus 3 so what's that can somebody please tell me that so why is it Okay, I, I, I don't have the spring constant. That's why I use the other formula. Okay. All right, so you guys can still hear me, right? 0 0.5 times 16 yeah. times 160. My internet is like working really badly today. 1.28 joules. Okay, let me change, switch the internet to something else. 
which internet is this okay mm -hmm. probably your phone wait <laughs> What's for mobile data? Mobile data on this one. Okay. I think now, I think it will be better. Anyway, so then um, you're going to go to the next thing, which is stress and strain. Stress is pretty simple. Stress is basically force per unit area. Uh, stress symbol is like this and it's force over area like this and SI units are Newton per meter square uh, the strain however is oh or Pascal's as well because this is the same thing as force like pressure strain is the ratio of extension over extension over original length because this does not have any uh, like the two quantities of meters, so there are no units. No. Okay. So then sometimes you will also get percentage strain, which is X or L times 100%, like that, right? So the area that we're talking about is this cross-sectional area. So in both of them, we have just like this cross-sectional area. And you guys need to remember that stress, this is called like tensile stress because it's like a force that's pulling it away. And this is called compressive stress because it is sort of a stress that's uh, squeezing the whole thing, okay? So, um, then you have Young's modulus. Young's modulus is uh, has symbol E. Young modulus itself is a ratio of stress over strain. So it's written as E equals to stress over strain, and uh, the SI units for these are Pascal's as well because stress is Pascal, strain has no units. And what you need to remember is that you can also write Young modulus as because stress is like force over area and strain is like extension over original length so you can basically write it as force times length over area times extension so th this formula is like more important than stress over strain because this will be like 99 percent of the time used okay yes atijas and um javeria and emmet maham sultan amna everybody understand this aman Yes, okay, pretty good. Now, um, so, uh, like you don't have already like a lot of materials, just concrete because they can ask you this. Concrete is a material which is very good in compression, like it can take a lot of compression, but very weak in tension. So, in tension force, what happens is when you apply force on concrete the top section of the concrete the material is pushed in like this and when the material is pushed in so this is like very strong but the bottom section what happens is that the material is like pushed out and when it is pushed out it's like very weak and you need to protect it so what we do is we put steel bars because steel Steel is very strong in both compression and tension. So you might ask me why don't we just use steel then and not use concrete because steel is quite expensive so we can't use like the whole steel so we gotta you know compensate that's fine. I hope everybody understands this. Anyway, now this question where it says which statement describes uh, the state of top surface and the bottom surface. So who can tell me what is happening here? What is X and what is Y?
yeah so x is like compression and y is in tension so x in compression y so has to be c everybody understands this any questions please okay then we're gonna go to the questions of young modulus which is very very important because yeah anyway so young modulus you if you just write it as stress over strain just this you will get marks okay don't worry about that so oh i did not do one thing i'm really sorry young they can also ask you about the uh, common young modulus uh, i don't know where did i put it that's not fair okay i put it like ahead so it's all, okay so young modulus steel is 1.9 times 10 raised to 11 young modulus is copper is this a steel wire and a copper wire have same cross-sectional area and length the two wires of each extended by equal forces use the uh, definition of young modulus to find extension now these type of ratio questions how to deal with them step one draw a table so young modulus basically depends on four quantities force length area and extension right now we need extension so it means we will write fl over ae so i'm going to make a table table will consist of f L, A, sorry, I'll write E here and A at the last. And obviously they have like, um, uh, and then you will have two wires. You have steel and you have copper. Okay, and we want to find the extension. So the force on both of them is the same. So we're going to write F. They have the same, I think, length. Uh, and they have the same cross-sectional area. So I'm going to write A. And the young modulus of both of them is like steel is 1.9 times 10 is to 11 and that one is 1.2 times 10 is to 11 and the extension in steel over extension and extension in copper what do we need extension in copper so then i'm going to make two uh, uh, two equations so extension in copper is basically force times um, area times Young's modulus. So I'm going to write F times L over A times 1.2 times 10 raised to 11 like that. And then I'm going to write extension steel F times L over A times E. So force is this force L is L, A is L and it's going to be 1.9 times 10 raised to 11. When you get this, what you want is you want extension of steel copper over steel so then write it like this f l over a times 1.2 times 10 raised to this is copper divided by use this sign okay f times l over a times 1.9 times 10 raised to power 11 when you remove like you remove the sign convert it into multiply so it's going to be f times l let me take it like this f times l a times 1.2 times 10 raised to 11 multiplied by a times 1.9 times 10 is to 11 divided by f times l now it is pretty easy for you to cancel so you can cancel f with f l with l a with a and you get basically at the end 1.9 times 10 is to 11 divided by 1.2 times 10 is to 11 so what is 1.9 over 1.2 So it's going to be 1.6. Is it clear, everyone? Any questions? Let me know. Okay. The next. The next it says two wires of extended by the same force. Both wires obey Hooke's law. Sketch a graph. So obviously like you know steel is going to be stiffer as you can see from the young's modulus so steel line will be upwards and this uh, copper will be down okay so this is steel this is copper is it clear everyone just sketch it you don't need to put any values here let me know if you have understood everything okay sorry Yes, yes. Okay, got it. Okay, now uh, the next question 
um, this you guys can do this is pretty simple because it's just uh, formulas you need to put in stress and strain and um, this is the similar question that I've done just now so this is also homework and uh, then we're gonna go to this one so now we also need to learn how to uh, do the experimentation for Young's modulus we need to find that right so it's very simple in the ex like you have to add masses over a pulley and there's a fixed ruler so when you add mass the wire stretches so there's a tag you know there's a tag that moves forward and each time the tag moves forward you find that extension and then you build a sort of table the table actually requires you to have force uh, to have extension the original length and the area right and then you can take multiple values of this and then you can find uh, like the gradient of this is going to be you can find stress from this you can find strain from this and basically let me just tell you here more in more detail so you need more in more detail so you need table of force every time you add some mass here you need extension you need area you need length you will find st uh, stress and then you you will find strain when you do this then what you're going to do is uh, you find the gradient of this graph for uh, stress over strain and then obviously you will be able to do it so it in this one it says that uh, right now they have drawn force and extension graph not stress and strain graph so that's uh, an issue but it says the length of the spring is marker is 3.50 and the diameter is this one and the gradient of the line uh, the use the gradient line to determine young modulus so we need to understand something right and that is I'm just gonna go forward and then I'm gonna come back to this uh, which is this part okay so the relationship between K and Young's modulus so if you look at Young's modulus formula it is FL over AX and if you look K's formula that is force over extension like that okay now notice that if I write E as F over X times L upon A would you mind which means that this thing is right here so I can replace this with K so actually E has a relationship like this okay length over area which means that E shows stiffness as well okay so we will keep this in mind and now we're gonna go back and work on it okay so we know this and for this question uh, we're gonna put E equals to F like K times um, L over A so in this graph as you can see I have extension and force I can take any value whatever value you think is easier for you just take it like for me I think this value is the easiest where the extension is 8 and this is like 25 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, K K will be like 25 divided by 8 into 10 raised to a minus 3 because this was in millimeters right now you might notice the graph never starts from 0 and it's 2 here uh, but obviously it's because they haven't given you the full graph in the full graph it would always start from 0 okay like that anyway so this would basically give me a value of 25 divided by 8 divided by 10 raised to power minus 3 and that is 3125 Newton per meter okay now I can find young modulus young modulus will be 3125 um, the length I think this is like marker x this is length given I'm sorry about that this is not k actually yeah but it still starts from zero it's it's not actually correct this is the length not the extension i'm sorry you got to find the gradient anyway that's sad wait let me get the other point which other point should i use i don't know let's use this so this is five and this is like um three three point two okay so k will be equal to the uh, like 520 
divided by the change is like 3.28 minus 3.2 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 3. Okay, now we can do it. Well, the other, other earlier value was wrong. It was basically the length, not the extension given. Very sad. So this is like 4, 4200 Newton per meter. Okay, now this is correct. And now young modulus will be like 4200 and the length of this, I think they gave us the length somewhere. When force was zero, the length was 3.5. Yeah, 3.50. And then we got divided by area. Area is like five by four and diameter is like 0 0.38 so we're going to write 0 0.38 times 10 raised to a minus 3 square now we'll find p this is a difficult question i didn't realize this okay 4200 times 3.50 divided by shift pi by 4 and then you got to multiply this by 0 0.38 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 3 and then square okay oh my goodness so this comes out to be 1.3 times 10 raised to power uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 possibles so they want us to find in terra terra would be i think 0 0.13 times 10 raised to power 12 so it's going to be 0 0.13. Is it clear everyone? Just look at it and if, uh, let me know if you understand this. Now it says the experiment is repeated with a thicker wire of same material and length. State how the range of force must be changed to obtain the same, uh, range of same. So you need to increase the forces because Young modulus will stay the same, but if you notice, like if you take area there, so you might realize if we want to keep E same, X same, we want to keep the length same, then force is proportional to area. The greater the area is, the greater the force is. So we got to increase, increase the force. Is it clear everyone? Now, the last thing we're going to do today, and then we're going to continue this tomorrow, and then hopefully we will start um, uh, waves tomorrow as well in the second half of the lecture. So they would require you to find uh, like couple of values that you need to remember. Like in estimation, these will be helpful. So uh, aluminum has 70 gigapascals of young modulus. Concrete is like 40 and then copper is like 130. So do we have to memorize these? Yes. Glass is 70 to 80 because they, they might just ask us plainly. So 110. And then iron is like high. Steel, usually steel and iron, they ask. Wood is like 10 and rubber is 0 0.01. Okay, so you gotta remember this. Is it clear? The most important ones is aluminum, copper, uh, iron, steel and concrete. So these ones are like mostly asked, rest of them maybe sometime, okay. All right. So I hope you guys understand something out of it. Um, oh, Balki, we have some time, five minutes. I would like to write this. Basically the experiment that they've shown, uh, they've also asked it uh, that you explain how we would do it so let's write this and then we'll end the class so that we have like full lecture from this and then we can go towards other things anyway so it says the student measures the young modulus of metal in form so with an aid of diagram and the apparatus that could be used so the diagram is this one right i'm just gonna use the diagram just to save time okay so diagram is the same you just need to draw this in the exam and um, 
let's paste it here so when you draw this diagram you say uh, apparatus that can be used so you need to find length like you'll say um, you need meter rule and you need um, slotted masses slotted masses are these okay then you need um, micrometer screw gauge micrometer screw gauge for measuring the diameter of the wire okay so you need these three things to perform this experiment and then it says describe the method used so first of all you're going to say original length and extension is measured by meter rule okay then each increment in mass gives an increase in length shown by tag tag or marker they've used marker in this so you can write marker like this okay here and then extension is calculated by final length minus initial length okay so this is how you want to write then fourth point use micrometer to measure diameter and area by pi by 4 d square okay so you're going to write this then find force using f equals to mg because there are slotted masses right finally six point plot a graph of values of stress like oh sorry you have to find stress find stress by force over area and strain by extension over original length okay you can write this and then you can write plot a graph between stress over strain okay so you can also show the graph if you want to but that's not required stress over strain and then finally gradient of straight line will be the Young's modulus so that would give you full marks please so you are to write all of this let me know if you have a question here well i missed out on this that they just want to find the required measurements uh, but i wrote obtain young's modulus basically you just needed to write in this question up till this point that's it so for this question it was required but i wrote the whole experiment just in case they ask this is it clear everyone I hope Khatijas and Mahams and Ayan and Amna, Aman, Suhail, Yaya, Ahmed Aziz, Suhail, uh, Ryan, everybody understands this? Okay. Yes. So I will see you in the next class then. Have a nice day. Bye. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum